Hello, this is Serb Atheist, and in this video I expose the folly of Darwinism. Now, that does not mean I have damaged my brain irreparably by hitting it repeatedly on the head and have become a creationist in the meanwhile. Darwin's theory of evolution is absolutely one of the most fantastic theories in the history of science. Never, I think never has a theory been so successful in explaining so many complex phenomena in such a simple, elegant, true and testable way. Even, even more so, Darwin's theory transcends transcends biology and is a general theory on uh, self-replicating systems being selected for any reason whatsoever. So it's it's really a, a one of the most greatest achievements in science. That said, I'm going to in this video expose the folly of Darwinism, which I sort of define as uh, an obsession with the idea of passing your genes to the next generation. So, if, you, if you're laughing at someone who did not have children, as in, ha 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 ha, all your genes will be weeded from existence. So, if you do that kind of thing, and if you think in that sort of way, you're a Darwinist. And if you go really into the deep end, you can start believing that some races or, or, or people are more superior than others, and then you're a racist or a social Darwinist. Um, Amazing Atheist was pretty effective in, in revealing that, that world to me in one of the previous videos about people who were overjoyed and looked at the Columbine shootings as some, as some amazing triumph of uh, evolution. Which, so basically just a bunch of sociopaths and psychopaths um, celebrating uh, their kind's achievements. So. I want to do a video on why obsessing, why you should not obsess so much about passing your genes to the next generation, and and why and why 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 you don't have as much control in that as you think you do. Well, first of all, unless humanity dies out, even if you're childless. Um, 99% of your genes will be successfully passed on to subsequent generations. And that's because human beings share 99% of the DNA. So every single person has the exact same 99% of DNA, which is sort of a cookbook recipe for our two arms, two legs, two eyes, heart, lungs, internal organs, brain, everything that makes us human beings. So all the differences in races, shapes, sizes, genders, comes from the remaining 1% of genes. So um, that being said, it's sometimes very misleading to say that sh you share, say, half of your genes with your sister. No, you share much more than half of your genes with your sister. Um, you know, you share more than 50% of the genes with most animal species. But um, the half, when they say you share half of your genes with, some, with your sibling, they mean the remaining 1%. Out of the remaining 1%, you share 50% of DNA. And in fact, it could be an even larger percentage because many races, many ethnicities... Um, have like large genetic markers, so share significantly more than just the 99% of genes. So unless you're in a relationship with someone from the other side of the world, you share significantly more than 99% of your DNA with them, and then with your siblings you share plus half of the remaining. So in essence, You've got 99% of your DNA already covered if humanity survives, and we should all work to that goal. Um, and um, and of those remaining ones that are sort of that you sort of think as your own, 
those those genes are not unique to you it's just a new recombination of existing genes that exist in many other people for example eye color genes or blood type genes um, you maybe have maybe a handful of genes if at that I'm, I'm not an expert on that but a very very small number of genes that are actually uniquely yours and no one else's and either the changes are either inconsequential I mean uh, if you're a normal average person then they probably are or they can be uh, pretty drastic and you can be a mutant a freak so it's sort of like an avalanche theory by far the, the more drastic a change is the less likely it is it is to occur so and in most cases the freak will die out but if the freak was uh, better capable of surviving then that would be the new normalcy so um, unless you're a very unusual person um, it's highly unlikely that you have some very new very special genes that will that will come to dominate dominate the human species in the far future and even if you did, how much does that have to do with you, with what you did, with who you were as a person? Uh, not much. So the gene success is the benefit is uh, is uh, the responsibility of the gene alone, not you. Not all of your genes into other generations will be um, as successful. And of course, this is uh, assuming a cruel environment in which most, if not all, of your children die out, and so on. So, as far as human descendancy is concerned, 70% of human beings will be the descendants of all humans, all subsequent humans. However, there's one other small aspect. If we're not just talking about the unique genes, not the common genes, but the unique genes, um, for each subsequent sibling, you have uh, only one half share and then that just multiplies up. So you share one half of your genes with your children, then one fourth with your grandchildren, and so on, and it just keeps dividing in half. So since humans have 30,000 genes, and the percentage of non-unique unique genes is significantly lower, um, that means that by the time you get to the 15th generation, you might not even share any non-unique genes unique genes uh, with your descendants. So even though you have descendants, you have not really passed on any new genes to them. And even if you did, your chances of transferring as you get more and more into the future drop to zero. And what will determine that will be less and less dependent on you and more and more dependent on on the environments you're in. So luck and chance will be uh, much more a factor as you go into the far, far future. There are probably many successful species that just through dumb luck 10 million years later did not leave any genetic descendants. And besides, we're now reaching a point in which Darwin evolution will no longer apply to humans. Not just in the sense of all of us can survive and be healthy and so on, it's also in the sense that we'll soon be controlling our own genetic makeup. Something like Gattaca, that's going to soon happen that we are going to be able to control which genes we put into our body and put only the best genes. So, hopefully this, this video has disabused you of the notion of Darwinism and obsessing about how many descendants you will have. I mean, people should have children if they want to but just that in the end it won't make much of a difference.